Hello, David Harper here of the Bionic Turtle. Welcome to an introduction to quantitative finance. When I think about the huge field of quantitative finance, I think a great place to start is this question, what is the periodic rate of return? Rates of return are so, so much a building block in quantitative finance. We use them in many places to estimate the value of a portfolio at the end of a period of time, to benchmark a portfolio against an index, to specify the behavior of an asset or portfolio model if we're going to plug it into, for example, a Monte Carlo simulation. So let's consider what is the periodic rate of return here I've pulled up from Yahoo Finance daily stock price closes for Google's stock. So we have December 14th on an adjusted basis, Google closed at $689.96. On December 13th, the day before that, Google closed here, 694.05. So this is raw data that I pulled from Yahoo Finance. And I want to make convert that into periodic rates of return. Okay, how do I do that? Well, let me explain that with simple d data that's a little more simple, and I'm just going to have three data points here. That's three stock prices. Let's just assume it's three days in a row. Two days ago, our hypothetical stock closed at 10. Yesterday, the stock closed at 11. And today, the stock closed at 12. What's the rate of return as the stock goes from $10 to $11? Well, the simplest thing to do is a simple rate of return and say, it equals the 11 minus the 10 divided by the 10, which is the base, that's 10%. If I do that again here at the difference between, as $11 grows to 12, of course I get 12 minus 11 divided by the $11 base, but now because the base is higher, in simple percentage terms, my growth is lower at 9%. So what I've done there is simply use the simple return. And see how simple that formula is. S sub i is the stock price or the asset price as of today minus the asset price on the period before that maybe yesterday. It could be something different. Our periodicity doesn't need to be daily. It could be the stock price from an hour ago if we're doing intraday periodic returns. But so it's S sub i minus S sub i minus 1 divided by this same S sub i minus 1 of the base. So that's the simple rate of return. However, in Quantitative finance, it's not so convenient, and that's because it doesn't satisfy the property of time consistency. I can't do this. If I want to figure out the growth from $10 to $12 over two days, unfortunately, I can't just add them together. I get 19.9%, which is not the same number I get if I went from $10 to $12, which is a 20% increase. See how I get a different result if I just add the simple returns together? Simple returns are technically not time consistent. They're not as convenient as the continuously compounded return. And what I'm going to do here is bring that formula up. And so it introduces a natural log, but aside from that, maybe I'll just put it, I'll just put it right here. Aside from the fact it's a natural log, which introduces the logarithm into the formula, it's also pretty simple. All we do is take the natural log of today's stock price divided by the stock price yesterday. So the net, and uh, here I've got this, I've got the formula here. I'm going to erase it. I'm going to actually erase it for both days, and I'm going to do the continuously compounded return as $10 grows to 11, watch how simple this is, it's equals, I'm going to start ln, which is the Excel function for the natural log, that's log base E. I open that formula and I say $11 divided by $10 the day before. So there's the formula right there for the continuously compounded return. If $10 grows to 11, 
No dividends are being paid. If I if it did pay a dividend, I'd add that in the numerator here, but I don't have that. So it's just a natural log of today's stock divided by yesterday's. See how simple that is? Hit enter, and I get the continuously compounded return. And now look, I'm just going to drag that down to get it to get it for this day, the next period anyway, $11 growing to 12, continuously compounded. See how it's the natural log of 12 divided by 11 gets us 8.7%. Now I am going to shrink this down a bit and put it over here so it's not in the way and show you how the continuously competent return, unlike the simple return, satisfies the property of technically what we call time consistency. It's really an elegant thing after all. What I can do is I've added these two together. Here, I'll take that out just to show you. I add 9.53, that's the one day continuously compounded periodic return, plus the next day, add them together, I get 18.23. Now, what if I just do a direct continuously compounded return from $10 growing to 12? That's the two day period. Well, nat natural log, I open the parentheses. It's $12 divided by, and I'm going back two days now directly. I close the parens. Look at this. The continuously compounded return over two days equaled the sum of the one day continuously compounded period. That didn't happen in the simple return. This is really an, an elegant, dare I say, beautiful property of the continuously competent return. So elegant, so useful, and in fact why in quantitative finance we prefer to use this continuously compounded return. And Don't be scared off by the natural log. Let me just show you how it's really the uh, let me put this over here just so you can see the natural log function Oops. Okay, let me make that show that up is the inverse of the exponential function in Excel. And to prove that to you, I'm going to say right here equals I'm going to take that $10 and I'm going to grow it by compounding it continuously. So to do that, I say I use the exponential function which is e raised to a power open parens and now I'm going to plug this in here the 9.53 so now I'm taking ten dollars and continuously compounding it at a rate of 9.53 close parens and here I'll format that and look at that I get the eleven dollars so see how I just used the 9.53 that was the continuously compounded rate given the natural log. And then I turned around and used that to compound the $10. And I could similarly, instead of compounding 9.53, I can go right to this 18.23. Now I'm going to compound $10 continuously at 18.23%, hit enter, and I get the $12. So those these two functions here are inverses. Now I'll go back to Google. And we can now answer that question. Here, notice I've got the dates in reverse chronological order. What is the continuously compounded rate of return on a daily basis here? We now know that the best way for us to answer that, in quantitative finance terms anyway, is to say L equals LN, open parens, today's price, divided by yesterday's price. We don't have a dividend. If I had a dividend, I would add that here in the denominator just to show you like that. See? But I don't have that. So I'm... Whoops. I got that. Okay. Let me... Oh, there we go. There's my formula. Continuously compounded return. I'm going to hit the percentage sign. You can't see that. And there we go. And I can... Those are relative references, so I can just drag those down. There we go. Continuously compounded daily rates of return for Google. I hope that was helpful. Thank you for viewing.